Hello viewers, welcome to my channel ITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Amparish. And today I have brought a very interesting uh, problem. Uh, it's an original challenge from my side and I'm sure you are going to enjoy this uh, problem. So without much ado, so let me straight away take you into the challenge. So here we go. Okay, so here's the problem. Uh, in the shown system, A is a block of mass M and B is a rough massless disk of radius capital R to which massless rod of length 2R is rigidly attached and a point mass M is attached to the other end of the rod. So fairly long sentence, let me explain this to you, what's happening here. See, this is a block of mass small m, okay, this green one, this is the block of mass M and uh, uh, this is a disc, this is not a pulley, please uh, bear in mind, this one is not a pulley, this is a disc and it is a rough disc, okay, so what will happen? A will go down and this thread will slip over this disc. Uh, why later on we'll uh, see read that why uh, why it has to slip. Uh, so this is the disc and uh, there's a rod attached to this disc and the length of this rod is 2R. The rod is massless, the disc is massless but it is rough and there is a point mass M attached at the end point of the rod. Okay, so I hope the situation is clear. And later on, we'll see in the problem that why this disk cannot uh, uh, rotate, okay. So, what's given, okay. So, block A descends in such a way that the angle theta does not change with time, right. So, this angle theta is constant and this rod is rigidly attached to the disk. So, if this theta is constant, that means what orientation of disk must be constant, right. So, that's given in the problem and if the orientation of the disk is constant, then that means what the thread must be slipping from under the disc so it's thread is slipping under the disc disc is going up and uh, block is going down okay so that's the physical situation i hope the physical situation is clear to everybody okay okay uh, yeah so block a descends in such a way that angle theta does not change with time the coefficient of friction between the massless belt and the disc is mu is equal to log 2 by pi so log 2 upon pi is the coefficient of friction okay between the pulley and this belt so belt is massless and uh, the pulley, the, this disc has got friction, the other pulley is frictionless, okay. So, the pulley C is frictionless, find the value of angle theta. So, the only place where there is friction is this uh, disc, okay, a rough disc is there. Everywhere else, there is no friction, okay. And uh, we are given that this theta does not change as this disc goes up, this, uh, this theta remains the same and we have to find the value of theta. So, if you want, you can give it a try. I will get into my analysis right away. So, let us look at the solution, okay. So first thing that I present to you is the uh, concept, it is a very important concept, so let us try to understand what is the concept. If a massless rope is slipping on a rough cylindrical surface being wrapped through an angle theta, then suppose uh, this is our massless rope and it is slipping over some fixed uh, cylindrical surface, then what holds? So then if this side the tension is T2 and the rope is slipping in this direction, then T2 is equal to T1 into e to the power mu theta where theta is the angle of wrap. So, here T2 is in the slipping sense. So, if the rope is slipping in this direction, this one is T2 and this one is T1, okay. So, this is a fact. Here T2 is in the slipping sense of the rope and now obvious question you might be having in your mind is what is the proof of this. So, let us look at the proof. So, let us consider free body diagram of an element. So, I am considering the, some uh, small element of this rope. Let us say this is the element that I am considering and let us say this angle is D5. And here I am making a highly enlarged view of the same D5 angle, okay. And please bear in mind since the rope is massless, so even if it is accelerated, it does not matter, the force has to be 0. Any massless object uh, must have net force 0 if it has any finite acceleration. Why? Because F equal to MA and if uh, a, uh, M is 0, then of course force has to be 0, right. So I am considering the small element of this uh, rope here or belt, you can say. And let's say this angle is d5, you can draw a bisector over here and then this angle is d5 by 2 and here you can draw the tangent. So, these two angles will also be d5 by 2. It's a pretty standard practice that you do for solving so many problems, finding tension, okay. So, the same thing I'm doing here and there will be distributed normal reaction over it. So, let's say dn is the distributed normal reaction and since the belt is slipping, so there will also be a frictional force mu times dn, right. So, friction is kinetic and therefore mu dn is the small amount of uh, uh, frictional force on this. So, now I am just going to do the vertical force balance and the horizontal force balance and let us see what we get from there, okay. So, if we do the horizontal force balance, see this force becomes 
t plus dt cos of d phi by 2 right and this becomes t cos d phi by 2 and then there is backward mu dn and bear in mind d phi is a very 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 small angle so i can consider all these things almost horizontal so what what do i get so t plus dt cos of d phi by 2 is equal to t cos d phi by 2 and plus mu times dn and also cos d phi by 2 is approximately equal to 1 so i can simplify this equation further so if you just uh, cancel t cos d phi by 2 and t cos d phi by 2 and rearrange this equation what do you get dt is equal to you get mu times dn that's it okay so small change in tension is simply mu dn okay and now let's look at the vertical force balance okay so here you have uh, t sin of d phi by 2 because of this and then t plus dt sin of d phi by 2 and this should be balanced by dn okay so that's what i've written t sin d phi by 2 plus t plus dt sin d phi by 2 is equal to dn and uh, you rearrange again and uh, use the fact that sine of d phi by 2 is equal to d phi by 2 why because d phi is a very very small angle and for small angles sine theta is equal to theta okay <laughs> so if you rearrange this equation and remove uh, forget about sine just think of it as d phi by 2 it becomes t d phi is equal to dn why the second order term dt into d phi that you can ignore okay that's because very very small so this is the third equation t d phi is equal to dn okay now once I have that equation, what I can do, divide equation 3 by equation 2 or the other way around, divide equation 2 by equation 3. So what do you get? dt divided by t d phi is equal to on the right hand side, dn goes with dn is equal to mu. Take this d phi other side and integrate. So you get dt over t is equal to mu d phi and when, see, uh, uh, this is uh, theta. So theta is varying from 0 to theta, okay, or rather phi is varying from 0 to theta because this entire arc angle this angle is theta okay so phi varies from 0 to theta and here the tension at theta equal to 0 is t1 and the, the tension at theta is equal to theta uh, phi equal to theta is t2 so t1 to t2 we integrate this and rearrange and this is what we get so this was the result that i stated and this i have proved it just now so i hope this result is clear and i am going to use this result for solving the current problem okay so let's see how to solve the current problem now coming to the current problem see so this rope is slipping over this uh, disc right this is a rough disc and the rope is passing under the disc from left side to the right hand side okay and what is the wrap angle you see this uh, this whole thing is wrapped through an angle pi around the disc so wrap angle is pi and if this tension is t1 this tension is t2 so we can write that t2 should be equal to t1 e to the power mu pi right and what was the coefficient of friction coefficient of friction was given as log 2 divided by pi that's given in the problem itself so t2 becomes so suppose i take t1 as t then t2 becomes what t into e to the power ln2 by pi into pi and pi cancels this pi and e to the power log 2 becomes simply 2 right so t2 is twice of t so this is t and then this becomes 2t right and this is this is this is 2t then this is 2t why because this pulley is frictionless right so now i can easily make the laws of motion equation for the block or uh, the um, uh, this one uh, anyone i can make the uh, laws of motion equation so let's see what equation do i get now suppose this is going up by an acceleration a then this must be coming down by an acceleration 2a by constraint standard the constraint relation easy observation so if it is going by a this must be coming down by 2a okay so now uh, i am making the equation the force equation for this uh, this system right so this disc has what what is the external force on this disc plus this point mass system so here is t1 here is t2 and there is an mg acting downward so t1 plus t2 minus mg should be equal to what uh, m into a so that's what i've written t1 plus t2 minus mg is equal to ma upwards right and t1 is t and t2 was 2t so this becomes 3t minus mg is equal to ma and just rearrange this so you get 3t is equal to mg plus ma or you can say t is equal to mg plus ma divided by 3 that i'll be taking later on so i hope this part is clear now another thing is uh, this thing is accelerated with an acceleration a upward so if i consider the from the frame of the center of this uh, disc or uh, frame of this disc there will be pseudo force acting on this small m so there is a pseudo force of ma acting downwards right and now I can make a torque equation about the center of this, but please bear in mind, don't forget the pseudo force. Why? Because it's an accelerated frame. And when you are balancing the torque, you are applying the statics equation in uh, this kind of frame. You always have to consider the torque of pseudo force also. So uh, please don't forget that because that's a very common mistake. 
So now we will balance torque about the center of the disc from the frame of center of the disc, right? Or from the frame of disc, you can say. So there is an MG and there is an MA acting downward and there is T acting and then there is a 2T acting. And I am balancing the torques about the center of the this uh, disc, right? So what do I get? So downward, so this is this forms the uh, this one forms the clockwise torque, this one also forms the clockwise torque, and this forms the anti-clockwise torque. Okay. So mg plus ma that is this force into 2r sin theta. So this is 2r. So perpendicular distance is 2r sin theta. And plus t into r. Okay. So this is t and this is r. So mg plus ma into 2r sin theta plus tr should be equal to 2t into r perpendicular distance. So anti. So clockwise torques is equal to anti-clockwise torques. Okay. And now you just rearrange this equation. You see r cancels throughout. Okay, and you have mg plus ma. Thankfully, mg plus ma is coming here directly. Mg plus ma, so I can directly substitute for mg plus ma. Okay, so mg plus ma into 2r sin theta plus tr becomes 2tr, and you rearrange this equation, you get sin theta is equal to t upon 2 mg plus ma. And now, what is t? You see from the equation 7, t is mg plus ma divided by 3. So, great, mg plus ma comes as it is. So, you can just put mg plus ma by 3 divided by twice of mg plus ma. And you get sin theta is equal to 1 by 6. So pretty neat answer. Okay. So theta is sin inverse of 1 by 6. It happens to be about a 10 degree angle. So that was my analysis for the problem. And uh, for your practice, I have given two more problems. If you want, you can practice. Uh, so this is the problem from Erodo. This is Erodo 1.93. Uh, and uh, you can have a look at this problem. Maybe you can pause the video to have a look at this problem. And the answer is given over here. So you can try solving this one to under, to make sure that you uh, grasp the concept nicely. And another practice problem is from David Morin. Now this is fairly simple uh, application of whatever we have learned. And the answer for this is uh, t less than t naught e to the r mu theta. So you can try out this one also. So uh, that's, uh, that's from uh, my side for this video. I hope you enjoyed this video and you enjoyed the analysis uh, as much as I enjoyed framing the problem and solving it. And I was so excited. I shared this problem with all of my students and I made them do it in my class, uh, especially the class 11 students. And uh, I'm sure uh, uh, you learned something out of this video. And if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up and please share this video as much as possible with your friends and uh, uh, through WhatsApp, Telegram, uh, Discord or whatever medium you use for networking with your fellow students. And uh, most importantly, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe to my channel because that's what keeps me motivated to do a new video every day. And thanks a lot for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. And as always, God bless you all. Thank you.